Vocations in post-Christian Europe are drying up, with one prominent German diocese having zero annual ordinations for the first time in 200 years. Join us with the latest Catholic news and commentary, Church Milton stand in Rome correspondent who also happens to speak the Deutsch, Dr. William Mahoney. William, can you get us up to speed on the priestly vocations in Germany? Jawohl, mein Herr. So the Diocese of Limburg has not ordained a single man to the priesthood in uh, for the first time in 200 years. And that's headed by Bishop Georg Betzing, who's also the president of the German Bishops' Conference. Now, you would think if he's the president of the Bishops' Conference, he would have a little bit, uh, you know, a, a leg up on, on, on having Catholic vocations in his, in his wheelhouse there. How is the bishop of all things but Catholic Batesing actually taking the news? Not well, and I'm going to quote him directly so I don't misrepresent him. He says, what worries me is that almost nobody wants to become a priest because there is no Catholic church without priests. You know, well, that's, that's touching, but I wonder if, if Vaitsing's actually connecting the dots here between his anti-Catholic teaching and the fact that no young man wants to sacrifice his future to present a, a Vaitsing's heretical views on, on what Catholicism is. Could you, for the sake of our viewers, William, I mean, I know you've, you've had the story, you've had your head in the story of Germany for, for months and years now. Can you run through some of uh, Batesing's and his, his compatriots over there? Uh, they're more flagrant positions on Catholic teaching. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Batesing's a big promoter and pusher of the Synodal Weg, right? The Synodal Path or the Synodal Way going on in Germany. That was so bad at certain points, even the Vatican had to tell them, hey, Calm down, calm down, guys. So let's say, uh, you know, the host of topics, it's like um, priestly, uh, you know, ordination of women. Like he's, he thinks that that's an open, that's an open thing. It's open for discussion. It's on the table. Of course, it's not. The church has clarified. John Paul II clarified that's just not a possibility. But he, he wants to make that a possibility and he wants to keep talking about it. Another one is all of the homosexual, the blessing of homosexual couples and the promotion of LGBTQ, XYZ, now I know my ABC's agenda, that, that whole thing. Um, and also, one other thing I'd like to add too is then also just the way Germany, as well as other places, have handled uh, se the sexual abuse cover up. You know, they've covered up for you know, sexual, clergy sexual abuse. So, you know, once upon a time, once upon a time, St. Boniface cut down the tree, you know, the tree of Thor to convert the German pagans there to Christianity. But now these bishops there, uh, like Betzing, are taking an ax to the roots of the tree or attempting to, so. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna take a couple of those things you were saying apart by themselves, you know, one about the women's ordination, and then we're gonna circle back a little bit uh, in the show here about the pro-LGBT and wondering, you know, if all these kids are listening to you and then saying, well, yeah, I can be, I may be gay or this transgender or something, because there's no firm leadership there, and then, you know, how that's gonna affect vocations. Um, but apart from the fact that young Catholic men don't want to market false notions of Catholicism, uh, why specifically here, and this is going to be, I guess, related to the, uh, you, you know, the young men not interested in a vocation to the priesthood with regard to females. I mean, there's so many factors here at play. One, one of the factors, in, in, as far as the church is concerned, is, of course, altar girls. That's a huge thing. I think it's like 80% of vocations once came from or I should say 80% of men who are priests also served on served at the altar. But once they started allowing girls uh, to do that, then the men started disappearing. And you just, you lost a lot of vocations that way. I mean, I know when that happened actually, when I was at the end of serving as an altar boy and I, I left and so did most of the other guys there. I said, well, you know, I don't, I don't want to do this. So that that's one huge thing another aspect is the family the breakdown of the family so many divorces and remarriages and all all of this all of this is also people are not coming from stable nuclear families so that's also another factor in this well, now, I, I know uh, I was a young man, too, back then, and when, when, guy, when girls were on the altar, one, there's no position there for a guy because he's, you know, it's already taken by a girl. And then number two, the, 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 the young boys especially don't want to be standing up there uh, with regard to the, um, 
with regard to uh, you know serving with the girl at that time. Girls are icky or whatever, you know, when you're in uh, fourth grade or something like that. Um, I was going to quote here, you know, regarding what other challenges are facing the vocations out there. You, you mentioned the uh, the nuclear family. There was a statistic here. Cara, Georgetown University uh, Applied Research in the Apostle comes out, and this is in America here, but you know, you know, Germany's kind of the, along the same line there. Out of 101 religious men, you know, you were talking, uh, William, this is kind of back up what you're saying there, that uh, the breakdown of the family as the family goes, so vocations, out of 101 religious men and women polled who were in, in religious life, 99% of them, 99% of them came from a home where mother and father were present during their formative years. Um, you know, that seems to underscore right there if the family's breaking up. And I know Germany has has uh, family issues there, Catholic divorce and everything, too. Um, that really underscores what you got going on. Um, is this is the family life, do you think, William, going to pick up anytime soon? And I guess this goes back to uh, Batesing, you know, being so pro-LGBTQ, uh, is that going to bode well for future, uh, you know, couples getting married, homo uh, heterosexual couples and having a, a nuclear family? I mean, no. I mean, for example, in, in China right now, I know I, I just saw a study not, not too long ago on China where no one's marrying there anymore. They all just live together and they don't have kids until much later in life because you know they're only allowed two anyway I, I, that's one example and then over here in the states with the proliferation of the lgbtq agenda you have uh, another another uh, study just came out which says that 28 percent that's almost 30 percent one in four individuals from generation z identifies as lgbtq um let me let me compare that to I have the stats here. Let me compare that to other generations. So this is the Public Religion Research Institute. So Gen Z, we're talking about 18 to 25 year olds. That's 28 percent identify as LGBTQ. Millennials is 16 percent. Gen X, 7 percent. Baby boomers, 4 percent. And the silent generation, 4 percent. I guess those are the ones that weren't silent about it. But they so you know so you can see this is uh, really proliferated and on top of that i just want to add one more is another one is the beckett index of 2023 showed that 61 percent of uh the gener of generation z individuals think that religion is part of the problem in the united states so they're oh, they're they're actually highly tolerant of religious freedom as long as the religious beliefs don't contradict um, contemporary worldviews such as the world contemporary worldview on the LGBTQ issues. So it's like just keep if you keep it to yourself and don't bother anyone, and they especially don't like it influencing public policy. So mixing these two things, you have a pretty hostile environment for family life and, and, and religious practice. Well, now here, uh, we're also looking at the, the rise of uh, the nuns, actually, those who just profess no religion whatsoever. Uh, can you speak to that? The ones that, put, that don't have any religion whatsoever, they weren't taught. They weren't, you know, there was no catechesis. They weren't taught. They went to public schools. Everything was secularized. So it's going more and more towards secular. And then the ones who go on to higher education, as we've reported many times, I mean, the university system right now is, for the most part, woke. So you have people go in there and they come out thinking they have an education. They think they're very intelligent, but really they're just brainwashed. So. Yeah, we have a, a stat here. A recent survey just came out in America. Uh, once again, liberal America and liberal, liberal Europe are, are kind of in parallel. Um, showed that 28%, for the first time, 28% of the uh, Gen Z, uh, well, actually not just Gen Z, but 28% of the population is actually in the nuns uh, uh, category where they do not profess any religion whatsoever. And that actually surpassed Catholicism, which is only at 20%. So we're having a, a real tough time. So, so William, what's the solution here to turn all this around? I mean, how are you going to get the family life back if... You know, you have Bates singing everybody, you know, saying, well, pro-LGBT, but you got to have family back to have vocations, and you got to have vocations to preach, you know, straight up good Catholicism, but you have Catholic leaders right now that don't seem to want to be preaching 
uh, you know, the full deposit of faith? What what do we do? Uh, sorry, I don't mean to. I'm snickering over here. I'm thinking it's a self-inflicted wound. This guy, like someone like Georg Betzing, Bishop Betzing. I don't. I just don't understand. He's punching himself in the face and complaining about the bruise. It's just. It's it's hard to understand. But the solution is to return to having strong families. Um, we ha the the, gen the the ones in Generation Z who are solid need to. And there are there are I, I you know I know some of them we've had some church militant so those ones have to they have to get married and they have to have a lot of kids and they have to raise them right and that's that's a huge part of the solution. And you almost have to be doing that in spite of the leadership right now, in spite of those who are saying, well, we need to have a, a listening church and, you know, let the tail wag the dog here. OK, well, I guess the tail is going to wag the dog by having good Catholic families and and having those future vocations bring things back into line. Uh, so I think I think you actually are squaring the circle for him. Well, if, if you want uh, someone to market your product, anything from cars to Catholicism, you need to have a consistent product, and, and you can't undermine that product along the way. Like the German bishops, if you, know, if you don't believe in the deposit of faith from sexual morality all the way to the ordination of only men, uh, how do you expect anyone will want to market your version of, of your product? Uh, you know, it's, it, your self-inflicted wound is what he was talking about. So what man will give up his life to market a lie? You think that's just common sense, but common sense these days doesn't seem all too common. Please pray for vocations, pray for strong family life. William, thanks for connecting all the dots for us on this story that has a rather dire consequences. You're welcome. Thanks again for watching today's episode of Rome Dispatch. This show is brought to you by donors like Real Estate for Life. If you're looking to buy or sell a home and want to support our mission, visit realestateforlife.org. Again, that's realestateforlife.org. Be sure to tell them Church Militant sent you. God bless.